Tonight we explore some trees in the dark and we find out just how bad a chameleon's bite can be. hunting for an invasive lizard that is a master of stealth. Searching near the southwest part of Lake Okeechobee, I'm putting my eyes to the ultimate test, hunting for the Veiled Chameleon. After searching in the dark for several hours, we managed to find both a male and a female chameleon. Now let's check them out. So this here is a very angry Veiled Chameleon. Now Veiled Chameleons are normally found around Yemen and Saudi Arabia but because these guys are really popular in the pet trade, you can now find them all over South Florida. Now, veiled chameleons can be found as invasive species in not just Florida, but Hawaii as well on the island of Maui. But obviously South Florida has a much bigger area for these animals to cover. Now, the cool thing about veiled chameleons is that you might notice they have this beautiful crest on the tops of their heads. Now, that crest or crown is actually called a cask, and both males and females have it and it gets larger as they grow. There's actually bones inside of this. Veiled chameleons have surprisingly simple and basic, <laughs> surprisingly simple and basic skeletons. They uh, are really delicate animals. And of course, living in treetops, they can be delicate because they have a lot of cover from potential predators there. And you'll notice he's reaching out for any possible branches with those cool feet that they have. Their feet happen to actually be five different fingers all joined together, fused into two larger fingers. And we call this zygodactyly. Now, zygodactyl animals include parrots and chameleons in that they have front-facing toes and back-facing toes, just like what our little veiled chameleon has. Now, this is a male, and you can see the males are a lot bigger than if I can have our, our female here compared to our little female veiled chameleon. And you can see them side by side. Their colors are pretty different. The male is much more brightly colored than our little green female. The males also have these blue stripes and I'll let her crawl on me. And on the backs of our male's hind feet, they have these little nubs. Those are called spurs. And those spurs help them grip onto the female when it is time to breed. Now veiled chameleons are a very rapidly reproducing species. The males live about eight years, the females only live about five years, but it only takes five months after they hatch for them to be, reach maturity, which means they can start having their own babies at that time. Now the eggs, they'll lay about 85 eggs per clutch, and they can do this multiple times all throughout their breeding season in the springtime. Now those eggs actually go through an interesting process called diapause, which means that they can wait until the temperature is just right for them to start hatching. And the temperature does influence these animals onto if they're going to be boys or girls. Another really distinct thing about chameleons is their eyes. They have what's called stereoscopic vision. And that means that one eye can look at one thing and the other eye looks at something else. This helps them to look for bugs whenever they're climbing in the treetops. I was so blown away by how cool these lizards are that I forgot to mention a few things while I was in the field handling them. Let's talk some more about their eyes. After locating a tasty looking bug with their cool stereoscopic eyes, veiled chameleons are able to launch their sticky tongue at a target. The tip of their tongue is cup shaped and acts as a suction cup onto their prey. And that tongue can be almost twice as long as their body length, minus their tail. In the Wild Florida episode about brown anoles, we mentioned that their cousin, the green anole, can change colors, just like the chameleon. For a long time, it was thought that chameleons and anoles changed colors through a specialized type of pigment cell called a chromatophore, just like an octopus. However, in 2014, some scientists were surprised to learn that instead of chromatophores being present like they had assumed, Instead, the chameleon cells were lined with a nanocrystal lattice structure that the chameleon skin moved to change the angle of light reflected by the crystals. Similar to how a prism can refract light, or how rain can refract light to create a rainbow. 
We collected these chameleons and passed them off to a friend who sells them for a living, which is a great way to motivate people to remove these animals from the wild. But some people collect these animals and move them to new areas in a controversial and illegal practice called chameleon ranching. This helps this invasive species spread much faster. The sad part is that because these animals are already so well established in Florida, and with the assistance of chameleon ranchers, they won't be removed from the ecosystem anytime soon. While it doesn't appear that veiled chameleons have a negative effect on any other native Florida wildlife, except for the bugs they eat, we might not find out the negative effects they have until years after it's already too late. Now when a veiled chameleon feels threatened, a lot of times they'll puff up them themselves. You can see she's pretty skinny right now. That was an owl. Now, you'll notice that he's puffing up a little bit and that's because he thinks that I am a threat. Understandably, we took him out of his tree home and you'll see he has that nice big row of teeth inside showing me his mouth and letting me know, hey man, I'm, I'm gonna mess you up if you mess with me. But their bite isn't too bad. We can just let him go ahead and bite me. You can see he's not really biting me at all. It's more just for show than anything else. He'll hiss as well. And they do have, no, he's biting me now. <laughs> you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get in. He gave me a good bite right there, but it doesn't hurt too bad. It's just a slight pinch, nothing too bad at all. Now the males will get about 24 inches. That's about two feet. The females only get to about 14 inches, so we'll get a little bit over a foot. This guy, I think, still has some growing to do. Same thing with this little girl that's here on my shoulder. How cool is that? Because these are a wild invasive species in Florida, you too can go collect chameleons if you want, but make sure that you follow a few rules. First off, don't trespass into other people's property unless they have given you explicit written permission. We found all of our chameleons just off the side of the road, spotting them from our car. Secondly, remember that even though reptiles are normally pretty hardy animals, chameleons can be delicate, so be gentle and nice to them. I'm Zach Attack, this is The Veiled Chameleon, and thanks for checking out what makes Florida so wild. Now chameleons are related to iguanas. They are a type of iguana. So like the anoles that we looked at earlier, these guys are technically related to them. No. No, I just want to touch her. <laughs> Sorry, you can talk later. It's all good. Okay, you hold the camera.